day viewers, Walter here. Let's break in a new pair of broke ends on this fine looking Memorial Day. Get them softened up a little bit. You wanna do a little cooking, do a little smoking? Take a look around some of the work I did yesterday. I cut the entire property. But mainly we're gonna work on smoking our pork loin today. All right, my friends, Rogan is an Irish name, an Irish boy's name. That might have something to do with why these kind of shoes, are, the kind of shoes I'm wearing are referred to often as Brogan's, an ankle high boot or shoe. But I'm gonna break these in. I doubt I'll have them, in, have them on too long. And I thought I'd make a nice opening for this video.
Time to rest a minute. All right, kitties, I hope there ain't no snakes under here. If they are, I hope you leave me alone. Ooh, that feels wet and slimy. Need some dry wood. Yeah, we don't need a wet wood, we need dry wood. This is oak, to the, about a year old. This cork one is only going to take about two and a half hours. I don't need a lot of wood today. That ought to be enough. Okay, temperature is getting on up pretty warm. Let's go get a hunk of meat and get it started. I closed the door down to cut the temperature back. We'll get it adjusted back down to about 250.
already got my meat started. Got the thermometer plugged in there, the probe plugged in to check the temperature. The internal temperature right now is 36 degrees Fahrenheit in the center of that pork roast because I just took it out of the refrigerator. But 36 is not frozen, so it must be thawed out. Okay, Google. Remind me in one hour to check the meat. Okay, I'll unlock my device. I'll remind you at 12.20 p.m. Thank you, ma'am. It's been about 10 minutes since I adjusted the fire last. What is my temperature on? 325, it ain't come down much. Maybe got too much wood on the fire. Well, I guess it'll have to cook at 325. I wanted a lower temperature than that. But you know what? Down where the meat is, it probably is closer to 275 or 250. Heat rises, so that thermometer is measuring the temperature at a higher elevation. I'm gonna say the temperature's all right. Heck with it. See what's happening inside our meat. Well, they don't say. Don't tell me the battery's dead. Okay. 45 degrees. This jumped up 6 degrees. It's cooking inside. Ah, uh, it's time to tell you, share a story with y'all. I was thinking about an incident that occurred in the Navy. We spent a lot of time in the Caribbean, down around and South America and Bahamas and Puerto Rico and all them islands down that way. And it's, you know, not a whole lot to do down there. So every once in a while, the captain would let us have a beer party when we went ashore. And we had a big supply of beer on board. You couldn't drink beer on board the ship. In fact, it was kept uh, up in officer's quarters somewhere so nobody would be tempted to drink any of it. Well, we'd been out at sea a couple weeks and the beer that was left over from the last party, they was, oh, I know there was 10 or 12 cases of beer times 24 in a case. That's a lot of cans of beer. Well, we're out in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. We're out in the middle of Atlantic Ocean, and the captain called for quarters. We had to assemble for quarters in the middle of the day. That's something you normally do in the morning. We're all standing out there at attention, waiting to hear what's going to be told to us. The captain proceeds out, and he's got an unhappy frown on his face. His name was Sovik, S-O-V-I-K. He didn't want to put up with a whole lot of crap from people. And somebody had went in officer's quarters and took or stole, I don't know, some of those beers. There wasn't a whole lot going on, I don't guess, but somebody stole some of those beers. I want to know who took the beer. Would whoever took the beer take one step forward? Anybody man enough to know he'd been caught probably would go ahead and step forward, but Whoever it was, the coward wouldn't step forward. I'm telling you, I want to know who, or there won't be no more beer parties on, on this ship. Nobody stepped forward. Here come the gunner's mate toting an M1 rifle. Now what the hell is he going to do? Had a couple of men bring out all them eight or ten cases of beer, or whatever it was. Throw them overboard in the ocean. Well, here's these cases of beer floating around out there in the Atlantic Ocean. The captain's standing by the rail with that M1 loaded. 
he commenced to shooting them cases of beer full of holes. He didn't quit shooting until there wasn't a beer can floating out there. We stood there and watched him shoot for, I don't know, 20 or 30 minutes. He was pretty accurate with that rifle. He could shoot a flying fish going through the air sometimes. Anyway, he destroyed all that beer and whoever the culprit was, I think the captain kind of had an idea who it was because it wasn't long after that 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 guy suddenly got transferred off the ship. The guy that I thought it was for stealing. So the captain was laying for his butt. They caught him. He, we were in some port, I don't know, Puerto Rico or San Juan somewhere. I don't even think there was a Navy base. Uh, anyway, we're in Puerto Rico. Um, I'm thinking it was Puerto Rico. He was put ashore with his sea bag out on the pier. I don't care where you go, get the hell away from here. We give him some orders, transferring him to some receiving station somewhere. That was the last we seen of him. Right now, a beer would go down real good. I don't know if there's any in the house or not. I might just go in there and get me one and celebrate. I used to drink a few beers. I ain't had one in a long time. I trust all of you people out there having a nice Memorial Day. And I hope it's a pleasant day for you. This people all are going to get back to the meat tanning business. <laughs>